thanks for clicking on this video. My name's Sophie. Uh, I learned improv originally with Miss Imp about four years ago, uh, and now I teach improv with Leeds University Union Comedy Society. Improv means a lot to me because it's taught me so much about theatre, but also about how to navigate the relationships in my own life. It's taught me how to love people better and how to understand what scares people and how to help them overcome it. So today I'm going to talk about using status in improv. Status is my favourite thing to teach because not only is it a great theatrical tool that helps us create believable characters and relationships, but I think it also gives us an important way of understanding our interpersonal relationships outside of the theatre. So the first few exercises that I'm going to do are going to be about using improv in a theatrical context, and the last couple are going to be looking at improv in the wider world and how status affects our relationships. Okay. So what is status? I like to think of status as the amount of control you have over a group of people. So when we talk about status, we normally talk in terms of high status, where we have lots of control over the people in the room, uh, or low status, where we're deferring control to the other people in the room. So status is not what you say, but how you say it, in terms of non-verbal cues like body language, tone of voice, um, and other non-verbal cues. So, this varies from culture to culture, so this video is going to be UK-centric in terms of body language and non-verbal cues. So, how do we play high status? So when you're playing high status, you want all the control in the room. And typically the way that we play high status is you keep your head nice and still, you have your chest open, and uh, you make clear, purposeful gestures. So not all characters playing high status are nasty and uptight. Um, a good team leader, for example, will play high status by complimenting everyone. Maybe they put your, their hand on your shoulder and reassure you that everything's going to be okay. So in that case, how do we play low status? So when you're playing a low status character, you do not want control of the space. You want to give that control to other people. We typically play low status by avoiding eye contact, closing off our chest and fidgeting. But not all low status characters are cowardly and submissive. The best thing to do if you have a friend who's really upset is to play low status to them, to give them the floor, make them feel like their voice is important. You lower your status and you raise theirs. So here's the first exercise. In a second, I want you to record a video. So in the video, picture the scene. You've been asked to speak at your best friend's wedding or an important birthday or something and make it your actual best friend in real life so that you're, you're not inventing so much. It can, you can make it a bit easier on yourself. So in a second, I want you to pause the video and I want you to write or improvise a little speech where you tell this friend how much they mean to you and why you're happy for them. And I want you to play this speech in high status. So remember, keep your head nice and still, open up your chest, make occasional purposeful gestures. Okay, go ahead and record that. Welcome back. So I'd like you to take another video. In this video, I want you to do the, pretty much the same speech, the same words and everything, but I want you to play it in low status. So remember for low status, avoid eye contact, close up your chest and fidget. Okay, got it? See you in a second. Okay, now that you've got those two videos, I want you to watch them back and compare them. Obviously they're different, but what do you read into this character you're playing doing this speech? What character interactions might have happened between the two in order to make this character deliver this speech in such a way? Have a little think about that. Oh, and why not post the two videos that you made in the comment section of this video and tag the person that you did your speech about and see what other people read into your performance? Okay, go ahead. Okay. So we've looked at how to play high status and how to play low status, but characters very rarely keep the same status for an entire scene. So something that can be really powerful to watch is seeing a character switch status, seeing a high character suddenly lose all their status, or a low status character suddenly gaining a status that they didn't previously have. A useful improv adage is allow yourself to be changed. So to explore this idea, I've got another exercise for you. So in a second, I'm going to ask you to record another video. And here's a scenario that I want you to play out. So picture the scene. It's 2 a.m. in the morning and you've maybe had a bit to drink 
and you suddenly get it in your head that you're going to ring up the person that you love, but haven't told that you love, and tell them exactly how you feel. You feel super confident this is going to go exactly the way that you want it to. And so you pick up the phone, you ring the number, and you get put through to the answer phone. And you have to leave a message. So what I want you to do is start off this answer phone message in super high status, and then at some totally arbitrary point, like literally like 10 seconds in, you lose all your status, become immediately low status, and discover why that change has happened as you're talking. Okay. Pause the video, take that video, and come back when you're done. Hi again. So, you know what I'm going to say? Do the same speech again, film it, but do it low status this time. Start low status and then gain some burst of energy that shoots you into high status. Okay? Understand? Same words, remember? So, take that video and then come back here when you're done. Okay, now that you've got those two videos, watch them back and compare them. So what story is the status telling here? How does the character seem to feel differently about this person that they love? Can you tell if the status drop is premeditated and how does that affect your performance? Take a second to watch the two back and ask yourself those questions. Let's think about the status in a totally different context. Politicians need to play high status to an entire group of people and make them agree that they are high status. There's a great book called Our Master's Voices, which goes through lots of successful speeches and tries to identify the common factors that make a speech come across well. Quite often, these features are not the content of the actual speech, but the way the speech is delivered. One of the most powerful things you can do to establish high status to an audience is to indicate to them exactly when they should clap for you. It's very strange being an audience and not knowing when to show your appreciation or when to clap, and if a public speaker is doing that to you, their status drops considerably. There's a brilliant story in Our Master's Voices about how comedian Spike Milligan uses these unspoken rules of how we collectively establish a status relationship. He wrote a comic play, and at the end of the play, the curtains didn't come across the stage and there was no blackout, which would normally indicate that you were supposed to clap. So the audience knew the play had finished, but weren't getting these signals that they were supposed to clap. And on top of that, Spike Milligan then came to the front of the stage and started playing God Save the Queen on a tin whistle. Now, in those days, if someone plays God Save the Queen, you're supposed to stand up and pay reverence. But since it was being done on a silly little instrument, again, there were these unclear expectations about what the audience was supposed to do. So some people stood up, some people sat down, some were halfway in the middle. And it was all engineered to work on this idea that we established status collectively as a group in a very certain way. So how do politicians tell us exactly when to clap? Well, the first thing they can do is they can project their point. They structure their sentence so it's really clear when it's about to finish. It's similar to the way that at the Oscars, they'll go, and the Oscar goes to Marlon Brando. It's very clear when the end of that sentence is going to happen. The second thing they can do is use list of three. List of three just sound complete. List of three work in advertising, comedy, and politics. The third thing they can do is use inflection. An upwards inflection indicates to the audience that you haven't finished. And a downwards inflection shows the audience that you have. Often all of these things are used together, along with high status body language that we looked at earlier on. These speeches can sound impressive, but then when you look at the content of them, there might not be that much there. It's not the case for every speech, but certainly for a few. Here's my last exercise. I'd like you to go on YouTube and find any political speech and see if you can pick up on these features being used. So that's projecting, list of three, and inflecting. How does this person use those techniques to make their speech sound better? Are there any points in the speech where they're not being used? When is a speech at its best? When is it at its worst? What rhythms does this person establish? Go ahead and look for a video now. Welcome back. That's all I've got to say about status and improv. I hope this video got you to think about how you use status in your improvised scenes, but also how to notice it in everyday life. 
I teach improv for Leeds University Improv, and I feel very privileged to be able to work with them. You can find examples of this improvising on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Leeds Improv. I've also recently started doing two prov with my friend Leo, and if you search for Costly Blood on YouTube, you can find our work on our YouTube channel. Or you can go to tinyurl slash cb2prov. That's tinyurl slash cbtwoprov. Thanks for watching.